Okay, um, we're coming out of the recession, are we? Does anyone think we are? No, no. I don't know, I've got trust in Brian Cowan. Do you like Brian Cowan? No. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I mean, look at the fucking state of him. I mean, that's actually what Brad Pitt would look like if he was born in Chernobyl. <laughs> He's fucking terrible. But you can actually tell when you're stuck in the middle of a recession when actually, um, you know, the homeless uh, beggars, they start issuing with loyalty cards. <laughs> And also the jobs, the standards of jobs are out there. I mean, in the recession now, they start advertising jobs that are actually shit jobs, and they try to make them sound like they're fantastic. I went for an interview for a job that uh, was for marketing and advertising. It turns out to be handing out leaflets. <laughs> they asked me, do you have any experience in handing out leaflets? Experience in handing out leaflets? Well, you know, I've walked down the street and I've been handed leaflets. <laughs> I imagine it's the same as that, except you hand the fucking things back. <laughs> But I went for an interview with the guy and he seemed really cool and he said to me that he'll tolerate anything, you know, he said I understand that people get sick, I understand that sometimes they're late, he said there's one thing I will not tolerate though and that's a lazy bastard. And that actually worried me a little bit because I'll be honest, I've been mistaken for one of those before. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's kind of terrible, We're, everybody's looking for money office. You walk down the street, you're hounded by people, the ones that really bug me are the Romanian uh, the chicks that are selling the roses. I'm walking down the street at night on my own. Why are you trying to sell me a rose? Is there some tradition in Romania of all these single Romanian gypsies who go home and have a wank and then give themselves a rose? <laughs> I, I, I don't need that. That's what my Hannah Montana calendar is for. By Hannah Rose, maybe, like, you know? But anyway. You know, it's, it's like the charity collector, and they're really aggressive, you know, they, they, they kind of shove the tin in your face. Do you support cancer? Do you support cancer? No, I don't support cancer. I think it's a fucking horrible disease. <laughs> I did actually give to the Alzheimer's Society once. Well, at least I think I did. I, I did that joke actually once seriously at a comedy show, and this girl in the audience got really pissed off. She said, my mother has Alzheimer's disease. If she heard you say that, she'd be really offended. I said, yeah, but you know what, fuck it, she'd get over it faster than the average person, wouldn't she? <laughs> you know, there's one, there's one group of people that I won't uh, make fun of, and that's people with speech impediments. No way, I won't touch that. I mean, you joke me, I only have ten minutes up here. I don't have time to argue with someone with the fucking stuff on it. <laughs> you know, if an epileptic guy goes to the gym and has a seizure while he's working out, is he getting fit? <laughs> You know, if anybody here wants to know how to get the ultimate blowjob, you just need to date a blind girl with asthma. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I am, um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of go through a bit of a, a bad patch at the moment. I, I saw my ex recently and it depressed me. I get depressed every time I see her, but you know, I, I have to open my freezer at some stage, don't I? <laughs> We used to have a lot of arguments, it was religious differences even. I mean, she was a Shiite Muslim, which I thought would be okay because I'm a Shiite Catholic. <laughs> but I do try to date women from different cultures. I dated, I dated an Ethiopian girl at one stage, and that was fantastic. She taught me all about the Ethiopian culture. Uh, she told, showed me how to make traditional Ethiopian food, um, Ethiopian spare ribs, which is ideal because I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> I went, you know, so I went out with her for a period. Well, actually, actually, it was a bit longer than her period. <laughs> but it ended up really badly. She got killed by a herd of goats, and that really freaked me because I've never seen anybody killed by a herd of goats. But then again, I've never seen a herd of goats in a wooden crate thrown out of a Red Cross helicopter before either. <laughs> First time for everything. But I've started to realise there's certain things in life you shouldn't do. For example, in the middle of foreplay, you shouldn't roll your girlfriend onto her belly, slap her ass and say, when that stops wobbling, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if the guards... Another thing you shouldn't do is if the guards stop you and ask you how you identify yourself, don't look in the rearview mirror and say, yeah, that's definitely me. <laughs> they don't think that's funny. <laughs> but you know, I'm looking, um, I'm looking for something to kind of uh, to do now for the... Um, so a bit of an adventure in my life. I'm thinking about going on a holiday and I don't really know where to go. I was thinking about Australia, but I read the form and it, um, one of the questions for the visa was, do you have a criminal record? And, you know, fuck that. I didn't actually realise you still need one to get into Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very important when you go on holiday to go somewhere where you like to do things, where you can do things you like to do. If you like to see historic buildings, maybe go to Edinburgh. If you like to party, go to Ibiza. And what I like to do is uh, Polish girls. 
<laughs> so that makes it very obvious to me where I need to go for my holiday. Now, I haven't really looked into it, so I, I'm not sure how much it's going to cost me to go for two weeks in Tesco's, but... Um, <laughs> All I, all I know is that I do need to get it sorted out really quick because apparently Aldi and Little are fully booked till the end of October. Seems <laughs> good. I know, yeah. But the amazing thing I'll tell you about the, um, about the Eastern Europeans coming in here, for ages and ages we prided ourselves on being the hardest drinking country in the world and now we see them drinking us under the fucking table. You know, I, I'm actually, I went into an off-license there and it, it was an Eastern European girl behind the counter and I was buying my, my cheap Huzza vodka and she turns around and said to me, that vodka's no use, it wouldn't even affect a child. I'm like, Jesus Christ, said, you need to have a bit more respect. One shot of that, you'd be on the floor. She said, that's bullshit, prove it. So I smashed the bottle over her fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> I was right, that bitch went out like a fucking light. <laughs> I had a bottle of Irish whiskey on the other hand. I was going to give her a shot of that as well, but she said she was driving. <laughs> but they sell these little gimmicks as well now in the offices. They had like a breathalyzer, a, a, a home breathalyzing kit. And it's 1499. $14 and it tells you within 95% uh, within accuracy whether or not you're fit to drive. 1499, 95% accuracy whether or not you're fit to drive. Now, uh, maybe it's just the way I think, but I'd rather go to Dunn's, spend 1499 on a bottle of vodka and be 100% sure I'm not fit to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take any fucking chances. <laughs> but I could, actually, uh, I could have actually done with that though um, recently, because I got stopped at a, uh, one of these breathalyzing points, and they're, they're fucking everywhere now, it's really annoying. And um, the, the guard asked me to go into the back and it lit up like a Christmas tree. So I, you know, I tried to bullshit my way out of it. You know, I told him I'm actually asthmatic and um, you know, I have an alcohol-based inhaler. Now, fair play, the, the cop didn't believe me. Now, he didn't believe that I inhaled 95 of the fucking things before driving. <laughs> he said, I'm going to need a sample of blood. So, you know, I want to be a law-abiding citizen, so, you know, I took my knife out and slit his fucking throat. <laughs> the bond guarder steps out then. The female girl comes out, Jesus Christ, what a minger. I actually thought she was part of the K9 unit. <laughs> She's the only one I know that actually has to get drunk before she masturbates. <laughs> and even then she wakes up the next morning and says, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> so I thought I'd be clever, like I said I'd waste a bit of time. I said, well, you know, I want to exercise my constitutional rights. I want to be questioned to ask Wayne I want to be questioned in Irish. I thought that she wouldn't know it. She turned out to be fucking fluent. So she said, was that okay by you, Smarthouse? I have no idea, it was an Irish, I don't know what the fuck you were saying. <laughs> That's all for me, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, where's it going? I'm lying, I'm going to answer. Right, um, how's it going? I, like I said, I do, I saw the toilet, I do for myself at home.